All right, my friends, in this section, we're going to start working on our Travis config file. So without any further delaying on my part, let's flip over to our code editor. Inside of my root project directory, I'm going to make a new Travis.yaml file. Now, I want you to remember, we have a leading period in the name of this file. So I'm going to put in dot Travis dot YAML, like so. Or we can just do the abbreviation YML, same thing. So dot Travis dot YML. So now inside of here, we're going to eventually end up with a tremendous amount of configuration. Some of the stuff inside of here is going to look rather familiar, and a lot of it is going to be pretty new. So we're going to kind of speed through the stuff that we already understand and get over to some of the new stuff. So the first thing I'm going to do is add on sudo required because we're making use of Docker. I'm then going to say that we require the Docker service to be pre-installed as soon as we try to run our build because we definitely need Travis to build our images and even run that test container. After that, we're then going to add on a before install flag. So this is going to be a series of steps that's going to essentially do just about everything up to that point. These first four things right here. Now the first thing that we're going to do is attempt to download and install the Google Cloud SDK. So to do so, kind of hard to, for me to give you a good explanation of where this command is coming from. Essentially, this is something that you would go and do a little bit of research on and just read up on how to install the Google Cloud SDK. Of course, I'm going to show you right now. I just want you to understand that this is kind of, you know, something coming from the outside world. So we're going to do a curl HTTPS colon slash slash SDK cloud google.com. And then we'll put a pipe. So that's a vertical symbol right there. It's shift and then the key above your return button. That is not an L. So not an L, not a capital L, not a capital I. It's a pipe symbol. And then we'll say bash greater than sign slash dev slash null and then a colon like so. All right. So this command right here is going to download the Google Cloud SDK and then everything on the other side of the little pipe right here is going to install it locally on our little instance that is assigned to us by Travis CI. After installing it, we're then going to run one other kind of strange command. I'm going to say source dollar sign home Google Cloud SDK and then path.bash.inc. So this right here is going to look at the default install directory of Google Cloud SDK, which is by, again by default at home Google Cloud SDK, and it's going to source the file path.bash.inc. Essentially that just means that there's some configuration that's going to modify our shell inside of Travis CI inside this file, and we're going to apply that additional configuration through the source command. Again, these two lines of configuration right here, kind of something that you would look up ahead of time and just be told, hey, run these two commands and it's gonna set up Google Cloud locally on your machine for you. Okay, so then after we install this thing, we're going to make sure that Google Cloud or the CLI is going to also install the kubectl command, the same one that you and I have been using throughout this course to manipulate our Kubernetes cluster. To do so, I'll write out g cloud components update kubectl like so. So that's going to install and update kubectl inside of our Travis environment. And again, we're going to eventually use this kubectl to apply all those different configuration files and some of the other imperative commands we have to run to set our images on each deployment. Now, after doing all this initial setup, we then have to do some authorization with Google Cloud or this G Cloud SDK. We have to tell it, hey, who's th this is who we are, and here's our password or whatever it might be, everything that it needs to actually log in and get access to our account. Now, the command for this is going to be a little bit more involved. We're going to write out the command, and then we'll talk about exactly what it's doing. So I'm going to say gcloud off activate service account dash dash key file, and then service account dot json, like so. All right, so you might remember back when we were working with AWS in Elastic Beanstalk, we had created that IAM user and we had assigned it some number of permissions that essentially allowed that kind of user that we made use of inside of Travis CI to actually access our copy of Elastic Beanstalk and do a deployment at some point. This service account right here, the active activate service account is essentially equivalent to that entire IAM system. So in order to tell Google Cloud or this SDK who we are and give it access to our account, we have to activate a service account 
and then provide a set of credentials inside of a file that we are calling serviceaccount.json. So inside of this file that does not exist yet, we haven't created it, we're going to eventually need to put some information that's going to give clear access to our Google Cloud account. Now, as you might guess, these credentials that are going to be placed inside that file are extremely sensitive and in no way, shape or form would we ever want to allow anyone to get access to those credentials. So let's take a quick pause right now. When we come back to the next section, we're going to generate the set of credentials that are going to allow access to be given to our account. And then we're going to make sure that we somehow securely add them into Travis. So quick pause and I'll see you in just a minute. 